Rod and Style Television presents The Blue Martian Starring Zach Parks Along with his 1928 Ford Watch as he restores it into a 1960s East Coast hot rod From outer space Hey guys, welcome back to new episodes of The Blue Martian. Alright, so it's been a while since you've seen us, since we had new episodes. Sorry about that. Uh, we were pushing, or I was pushing, to build it, to get it drivable for Trog and show it off. Um, not done, but drivable. And uh, what happened was, how I was going to ship it up there uh, fell through, and I was only able to take one car, personally. And I was entered in the race in my Roadster. Uh, so I decided to take that, and I was also building the 34 to race at Trog also. Uh, that's a customer's car, and the customer was going to race that at Trog. Hindsight 2020, Trog got canceled, it got stormed out. Um, so we were unable to race, really unable to do uh, really anything, because uh, the storm got pretty bad, and the water actually came all the way up to the boardwalk. So there was even no beach at all. But that being said, that's why I put this on the back burner. I was unable to haul it. Since I couldn't figure out how to haul it up there, I had more pressing things I needed to do. I painted my car, got it tuned up, ready to race, and I got the 34 ready to race also. So this got put on the back burner. <clears throat> Those guys that watch my channel know that I'm building like four cars at one time right now. And I hate things sitting in the corner and not doing anything. I hate projects sitting still. This has been sitting still a little bit. The last time you've seen it, I think the body was on it. And uh, we promised to not gloss over anything, not skip anything. We're going to show you the awesome, cool, fun parts. And we're going to show you the boring parts, too. We're going to show you the whole build. We're not going to skip over anything. So right now, what I'm in the middle of doing is taking this all the way down to finish weld everything that I have. Um, I know my alignments were all good. I know the rear axle was all good. I know the transmission, pinion angle, everything. I, I, we figured it all out. It's all good. I need to blow it all the way apart now and finish weld everything. So I solid welded a lot of things on the top. Uh, I stitch weld everything that was on the bottom. So it's all secure and not going to move, but it's not finished. So what I'm gonna do now is take this all the way apart, weld the bottom of the frame, get it ground down, get it looking good, finish weld everything on the axle. There's a lot of things going on that. Uh, on the next episode, I'm gonna blow that axle apart and do some measurements. I actually need to um, get my axle lengths measured because uh, I'm switching that over to Posi. Uh, it's a Dana 44, which is super common. Uh, so there is a lot of aftermarket for it. So I figured, well, I'm going to play around in this car quite a bit. I'm going to drive it a lot. Let's make it very drivable and capable of putting some power down. In the long run, this thing's getting a big cam, aluminum heads, roller rockers, everything that I could possibly do to a 283 to make it really, really hopped up. I want this to be my fun car. I have a lot of flatheads. This is like my only small block other than my K10, which is just a big tow rig. So it doesn't really have, you know, that kind of street power. This is the car I want to have a lot of street power and have a lot of fun with. So uh, I want to set it up to be capable of handling that kind of power. So the Dana 44 is going to get blown apart. I'm going to completely rebuild it. Uh, new uh, uh, gear ratio, um, new bearings, the works. It's going to be like a brand new... Uh, hot rod axle. So I'm very excited about that. Now the body. The body is off upside down and I'm ready to finish weld the uh, frame structure from the bottom. So I'm happy with everything on the top but from the bottom I want it to be solid welded from the bottom. Uh, that is a little bit overkill. It doesn't need to be solid welded honestly. Uh, you could stitch weld it, seam seal it, call it a day. I want to solid weld it just because I can and uh, that's the only excuse I have. <laughs> just Hey, it's upside down. It's easy to get to right now. When I throw it back on the frame, it's never going to be uh, easy to get to ever again because this transmission and everything is really, really tight in this car since it's channeled so hard. And so far, our plans going forward. We're not going to commit to any particular show right now to show it off. What I'd rather do instead of rush around and try to get it done is I'm going to spend the time making it really nice. So the big goal, overall goal, is this is going to be a fully restored hot rod, really, really pretty, 
flake the works really really nice hot rod um the thing about that is when i first got the truck i was completely infatuated with it which i am now and i loved all the history we found pretty shortly after getting the truck very exciting um i planned on just restoring it as little as i could and get it running and driving because of all the history um and i thought that would have been the cool idea to do the problem with that is longer I worked on it, more issues I found with the body, more issues I found with the bed. Um, it's not as nice as I thought it was, which is completely fine. I'm not worried about it being rusty because it's still a Roadster pickup. The rust that I have to fix really isn't that much stuff. It's, it's bad enough where I can't really leave it because I'm not into rat rods. This isn't going to be a rat rod. Um, it's like a custom. I like a 60s style custom. So we're sticking to our plan except for we're going to add bodywork and paint to this as well. Uh, what I want to do in the short run is get it uh, solid welded, everything safe and how I like it, and primered and all that kind of stuff, right? Because since I've been grinding on the, on the frame and welding on it, it's got to get encapsulated, it's got to get primered, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the frame is going to get all painted up, the axles are going to get painted up because I'll be pulling them out, rebuilding them. I'm not going to have them out on the desk or on my table here and not paint them um, instead of throwing them back in and trying to paint it later. That's such a headache. So I'm going to paint stuff while it's blown apart, but the body and the bed is going to remain original uh, for now. Because what I want to do is take this car up to uh, the last surviving brother who built this truck. And I want him to see it, sit in it, drive it around with still the paint on the side of the car that he painted in, back in the 60s. And I don't want to take a way of um, giving him some memories to call back on by looking at the truck, how it is. It's still, when he painted it in 65, it's still been untouched, that part of it. So he can enjoy it. I want to let him drive it around, get his reaction of how it feels now compared to how it felt in the 60s. Hopefully, uh, we've made it better, uh, a little bit more power. That's my goal. But uh, I want to make sure I give him that moment of enjoying the truck that he built back in the day before I completely redo it and make it the truck that I built. Now, the, the thing that I'm gonna do, um, the blue Martian that's hand painted on the side, I really, really love that. That's the coolest thing. After we paint it, Scratch is going to uh, repaint that on the new paint job. But what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna replace that entire panel. It doesn't need to be replaced. I wanna replace that entire panel so I can save that blue Martian and frame it and put it up on my wall so I can enjoy it for the rest of my life and not just grind it down and uh, repaint it over the top of where it was. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it forever and enjoy it. Hopefully, um, uh, Mark, he can enjoy the truck before I take it all the way down to bare metal and finish all the rust. Uh, I want him to have that moment. I wanna save that for him. I think that'll be great for him and I think it'd be great footage and I think all, all above would be perfect. So. Uh, that's the plan, and uh, all I have to do is after I get it running is blow it apart one more time to do the finished paint um, on the body and, and the truck bed and, and body work, obviously. So that's what I'm going to do. I might replace the firewall before I send up to Mark. I might not. I'm not sure. Um, the firewall has a lot of old school modifications like everything else on this build, but... Um, I'm undecided about that. Let me know what you guys think. In the long run, it's gonna be a completely flat, smooth firewall because I'm going to sew up um, some pleats and it's gonna be a nice pleated firewall, leather pleated firewall that matches the leather pleated interior because uh, roadsters are all open. The interior is the exterior at this point because it never has a roof on it or it's very open looking. So all that kind of stuff has to match and flow from the inside to the outside. And that's one of the things I wanna do to keep the flow. Great thing, awesome thing. We got in the tires for the Blue Martian. I'm going to mount up the rear tires so you can get a good look at that. We got these tires from Radar Wheels. Um, they sell awesome wheels, awesome tires, uh, a bunch of other things. I really like the rear rims. I really like the front rims. Uh, our next big project, we're actually going to use their front and rear rims. But uh, we have Radar, Wheel, uh, Radar Wheels tires in stock here now. And let's put those on our actual rims. Everyone keeps busting my chops about they hate these rear rims and these tires aren't right for a 60s car. Yes, that's been mock-up. 
Now I'm gonna finally show you what's not mock up the real deal. So let's slap these tires on, show you these rims, and we can drool over it together because I love it.
polish on these. And this setup's gonna look really cool. I'm gonna leave the blue on there for now until I actually get it driving on the car. Then I'll worry about getting the blue off the white wall. Just wanted to get a good look at our combination now that the official stuff is coming in. So now you can actually see the rim and tire combination of what we're going for. They made these style rims in 1964. Fitton started them in 1964. These cheater slick tires, totally 1960s. Um, if you're looking at radar wheels and you're wanting some cheater slicks, they are, obviously you can switch around the other side and it looks great if you don't want white walls. Looks really, really good. That's what our next project's gonna look like. But for the Blue Martian, White walls out, super 60s and classy. Big thank you to Radar Wheels for making such great tires. So hopefully you guys are excited to see the Blue Martian back. Let me know uh, what you're most excited to see here. Let me know what you think about me saving the old paint for Mark to drive the, the truck around in. And let me know what you think about us after his experience, completely restoring this into a beautiful, fully finished 1960s hot rod. So. Thank you for watching guys, see you next time.